Mr. President, I want to focus on the uh, uh, comments he made about uh, the qualifications of a certain individual. And I want to ask the question in comparison to those who sat on the court before. And first of all, would the senator agree with me that we have certainly elevated the people from the, to the Supreme Court straight from the bar who have had no previous judicial experience? Senator from James City, Ken. Mr. President, I would acknowledge that. Further question, Mr. President. Senator Yu. I would ask the senator then uh, if, if he can go through his recollection of those individuals who moved straight from the bar to the Supreme Court, if they had experience in all three areas of criminal law, domestic relations, and workers' compensation. Senator from James City, Ken. Mr. President, one in particular that is coming to my mind, and the answer is in the affirmative, yes. And further, more emphatically, that those individuals had enough intuitive insight to check with both Republicans and Democrats to see whether or not there would be a broad base of support before the candidacy, before they waded into those turbulent waters. Senator from James City, I mean, excuse me, Junior Senator from Henrico. Uh, further question, Mr. President. Senator, yield for an additional question. Yes, sir. He yields, Senator. Um, Mr. President, would the Senator be uh, good enough to uh, instruct me as to what candidate he believes moves straight from the bar to the Supreme Court that, had all, that met all three of those criteria in terms of experience? Senator from James City County. Mr. President, I am not going to get into naming judges on the Supreme Court. I think there's been enough degradation of some of the candidates today. I thank the Senator. Thank you. The motion on the floor is, should Resolution 504, I'm sorry, Senator from Powhatan, Senator Watkins. Mr. President, speaking to the resolution. <clears throat> Go ahead, the floor. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, I have sat here and listened for the past hour, and we have not held ourselves very high in this hour. You have two very accomplished jurists, two very accomplished attorneys, and we have lowered ourselves to debate their qualifications in most unflattering terms here on the floor of the Senate. Yes, we have the right to do that, but traditionally, we have maintained more decorum. We have committees that are set up within the structure of the Senate of Virginia that look into the issues, that look into the concerns, that look into the qualifications. And unlike it was 20 years ago, the doors are open to all of the members and to all the individuals who care to inquire and see the proceedings and understand the proceedings. We didn't bring it to the floor of the Senate. I am very concerned with what this does to this process. I am very concerned for upholding the court, particularly the Supreme Court, with regard to the protections that we offer through that committee system and through that interview process. So it is with a lot of difficulty that I'm going to stand here and say to you, I'm not going to vote for this nomination because I think we need to go back to square one. And the way I see it, I may be wrong, but the way I see it, if there's not a nomination, then the seat's not filled. Yeah, that doesn't protect the current justice who's been appointed on an interim basis, nor does it replace that individual. But it puts the burden back on us to figure out what is in the best interest of the people of Virginia and what is in the best interest of that court. You know what? I doubt 
if either one of those two people want to serve now. I have my doubts. And I couldn't blame them. They're both very accomplished individuals. And they could probably be doing something that earn, would earn them a lot more money, leave them a lot more time at home than serving on the Supreme Court of Virginia. But they have been willing to put their name forward. So I think we owe them the respect. We owe any justice the respect that it be done properly, that they be given an opportunity for an interview, that we vote on it, and that we fill that seat in a timely fashion. We've got plenty of time. Those six jurists that are currently sitting on the Supreme Court will be just fine. They will be just fine. So, Mr. President, I apologize for waiting so late to get up and say something, but it just it concerns me um, that this situation has been brought about. And as has been stated by people on both sides, there are enough, there's enough blame to go around on the executive branch side as well as the legislative branch side. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. The motion on the floor is whether Resolution 504 should be agreed to. All in favor of agreeing to the resolution will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. No. The noes have it. The resolution is not agreed to. Seeing eight hands, there will be a recorded vote. All in favor of agreeing to resolution 504 will record their votes. Aye. Those opposed, no. Are the senators ready to vote? Have all the senators voted? Do any senators desire to change their votes? The clerk will close the roll. Ayes 20, noes 20. Ayes 20, noes 20. The chair votes no. The resolution is not agreed to. The chair directs the senator from Hanover, Senator McDougall, to inform the House of Delegates of the nominations that have been made by the Senate. Senator McDougall.